Hello and welcome to Oz Living. This is Yanni Collins and I'm so pleased to introduce to you our guest for today. She is a successful entrepreneur and founder of multiple companies such as Block Tides and Placewar. She has over a decade of experience in tech, business, marketing, and PR and has raised over $5.4 million in funding. She is recognized as the branding and marketing expert and honored as a top 50 women leader in tech. So Myrtle Ramos, it's so great to have you. Welcome back to the show. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's so unexpected. I really thought it's just a simple interview, but yeah, I'm happy <laughs> to speak to you guys and of course share my uh, passion, everything that I'm doing and my background. I know. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. I, I remember I reached out to you last year, but we didn't push through for um, time per, not permitted, but like really appreciate you for being here. So I'm keen to learning more about you. Could you tell us about your background and before all this success, what were you doing before and how you did landed in blockchain? So basically, um, I'm the typical um, 95 um, employee. Uh, for eight years, uh, specifically as an account manager, tech and sales, um, customer service. I really, I am really into uh, the sales. Uh, forte, you, you know, my forte is really um, closing sales. So basically, I'm from the corporate world here in the Philippines. And I jumped into the blockchain space 2016. I know Bitcoin already way back, but I founded a Block Tide 2017 way back when we're doing events, basically. Um, and then someone tr actually trusted me to host an event here. So someone messaged me on LinkedIn. You know, it's really surprising that someone will actually uh, tell you, can you host an event for me? And then he he immediately sent me a money. Of course, if if other people what what are you gonna do uh I, i'm not really being um a stereotype when it comes to other people but of course me i really took that opportunity not to take advantage of that trust that someone gave me and then initially we done the tour uh for blockchain innovation tour way back i really don't know what blockchain is and then at the same time i got interested while doing it already and then studied everything from ICOs and then about until now, it's now NFTs that's actually booming. Wow, this is a roller coaster of a journey. <clears throat> and what essentially um, made you become or decide to become a branding and marketing expert in this, in this industry? So when it comes to branding, way, way back, I'm, I'm really not good when it comes to my own personal branding. So I studied companies since I've been in investor relations also for several companies when I started doing side hustles. You know, I'm a single mom. So that's why my bread and butter is not from the nine to five. So I'm really looking for some uh, additional income for me to sustain everything. So that's when I realized why do I need to stay this way? So why not I become actually a branding expert for many companies since I can actually enhance my skills? You know, when it comes to the grind at the background, uh, a lot of people just can see the success of everything, right? But but behind everything, I really studied everything from scratch, took master classes at the same time. I've got uh, accepted basically in Draper University. Uh, that's based in Silicon Valley for entrepreneurship. So that's when I really went into full blast, knowing my creativity can definitely help many companies. And at the same time, traveling really makes me uh, see outside the norms that you can definitely see here in the Philippines. Wow, that is so cool. Yeah, like just hearing about your hardship, it makes me really appreciate what your, your your success right now and what you've been through through your journey. So what has been your main focus at the moment and are there any updates that you would want to share our audience regarding Block Tides and Place War um, about your latest advancements? 
So the latest advancement, so we are now registered in SEC for block tides, and then now we're a growing company. We're still fixing, of course, the regulations here. We need to be licensed, of course, uh, but that is fixed already. So when it comes to uh, place war, so it's a game five. So game plus finance. Basically, if you've heard about Axie Infinity way back 2021, 2022, we're not a typical Axie Infinity game. But of course, it's another game that you can definitely enhance your creativity, your strategy, just like Worms. And basically, we're going to release the PvP very, very soon. Wow. Oh, so from Block Tides, which is a PR and marketing firm, what made you decide to penetrate the gamify industry? This is really cool because, you know, when passion aligns your work is really um, awesome. So way back, I'm really playing games, Mobile Legends, um, League of Legends. I've been an ambassador for League of Legends for quite some time and also doing some tournaments. So that's actually a hidden information about me oh. uh, way back. So 2016, <laughs> 2015, I've been doing tournaments for League of Legends. And then um, I've been very bullish when it comes to the blockchain projects, when it comes to gamification. So I've been supporting Gala Games. They actually want to hire me as uh, a country director but i told them i'm an entrepreneur and i don't want i will just help you when it comes to of course your uh, marketing and other uh, organic reach for your company but yeah i've been very bullish when it comes to nfts attending blockchain conferences 2018 2019 i saw their crypto kitties and other nfts already which is not really famous way back so that's where the passion ignited and then I really love Gun Gunbound, if you're familiar with that, during the 90s. I'm actually escaping my home for me to play those kind of games, the, yeah. the white computers that we have. So, <laughs> yeah, we call it Kabataan. So uh, I'm really escaping uh, and then playing games in a PC. So that's actually the concept what, where we got for Place War. Oh, that is so cool to hear. And I also have to congratulate you, you know, for winning the Outstanding Crypto Entrepreneur for the year 2023. I want to know what is it about Myrtle that differentiated you, your approach, your work, and the way that you manifest your vision from all these other people that are basically doing what you're, what you're doing at the moment. That's actually, now I, I pause for a while. So when it comes to um, the vision that I have, I just really wanted to help people. You know, I'm also into spirituality. Uh, then I came to realize I understand now my strengths and weaknesses when it comes to everything. Because, you know, when you master yourself, uh, you can definitely know what's your weakness and you can use that weakness for you to be able to be strong in helping other people. So that's the reason why we are always giving giveaways during the pandemic. Uh, that's where actually block tides had a breakthrough. 2020. So a lot of people are just in their homes watching my live series. But after three years, there's a lot of lives that has been changed. And then it's still overwhelming that it happened. You know, it's still happening right now. It's still continuous. That's the reason why I will never stop empowering people, giving them jobs at the same time. Um, really uh, making them understand that there's this another world, which is blockchain or what 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 which is called web3 now or the metaverse that you can be anything yeah i totally resonated with everything that you just said like just knowing more about yourself uh knowing your strengths and weaknesses you could like use that as a strength to like leverage everything and and basically also like when you are keen to helping people right that also has a benefit that comes in the future so yeah like i really love your values um Myrtle. Now, um, coming from like a PR and marketing perspective, I want to get your thoughts on how has the landscape of PR and marketing in the blockchain crypto space evolved since the pandemic? Like, what are the things that you've seen that didn't work? And what are some of the effective methods that uh, crypto firms should be applying now to reach their target audience maybe or build that awareness? 
So when it comes to this, you know, this is really a do uh, totally different marketing strategy. Because if you don't have the experience, if you haven't really witnessed everything way back 2017, 2018, 2019, you'll never, uh, you, I, I don't mean that it's not going to be successful, but most of the campaigns will not really work if you not if you not understand what happened do, during those cycles. You need to go back first. If you're wanting to build your own PR, if you're actually there as a new startup or a project, you need to understand what happened way back. You know, uh, the connection of history and the present moment is really important for you to understand what's happening. So KOL influencers is really not working when it comes to cryptocurrency. It's just going to build hype, but not really a long lasting project. So that's what you really need to consider first. As long as you actually have the alignment with the influencers, uh, that you have the same values and principles, that can totally work. But when it comes to uh, just hyping it up, just being paid, promoting stuff, it's not going to make it. You know, We call it not going to make it right in this space. So it's really not going to make it. And we're really pursuing um, organic reach. Those who, who really trust us with our vision and mission to actually decentralizing everything, giving opportunities and financial freedom for everyone. I'm not saying that you're going to be a millionaire, of course. Be careful with your investment still. But this actually opened a lot of um, opportunities, not the same way in the structures like the old stigma that we have. That as a gamer, you will not actually uh, earn something, but here it's totally different, right? So that's the stigma that we're breaking and the status quo way back. So there's no stereotyping about uh, for the gamers anymore. Yeah, th those are very insightful points. Like we should have to go back to our history to understand what's happening today. And also um, KOLs are not sustainable. They just build up the hype. Yeah, those are very cool points. Um, and I want to know what your... What are some of your predictions for the most significant trends that are likely to shape the future direction of the blockchain industry um, for the year ahead? Okay, I have a disclaimer, by the way, for the influencers. I'm not saying they're not valuable, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Just not sustainable, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, not really not that sustainable, but um, I just want to open their minds and, of course, their hearts when it comes to really supporting projects. It's not just about the money here, but really building sustainable long-term relationships with the projects that they're promoting. So... Because me too, I am really considered as an influencer already because of my voice, because of the reach that I'm uh, like Elon Musk. I don't I don't know if I can handle such uh, criticism when it comes to the million followers of Elon. But of course me, I still impact many uh, people when it comes to my posts. So just be a responsible influencer because it can definitely shape the mindset of uh, a person or a group. So that's just my disclaimer there, okay? And uh, the next question. I, I do, I do want to hold that thought for a bit. I want to get your experience. I, I, I do know that you're an influencer, coin market uh, cap influencer. Tell us about your experience with them. So basically, I won numerous time in being the top creator for uh, coin market cap because I told myself, why not if I can produce like uh, good contents? You know, I just took a leap of faith in producing YouTube videos because I'm really afraid of criticism. So I just started our YouTube channel and it went well. And then that gave me a boost with my confidence that, oh yeah, I can definitely uh, generate good contents. Why not? And I can definitely generate good education points for the viewers. So that's really the strong point that I had. And then now we're still continuous. We Yes, we don't have yet hundreds of thousands of followers on YouTube. But of course, it's all about making a difference step by step. I can definitely attest to that. I mean, I love watching your videos. It's very educational. And I could say that I've learned most of my, you know, my crypto, my crypto learnings from you. Oh, <laughs> so thank you for okay, providing you so value much. to people. And I think that's the number one reason um, that we have to have in our minds when we're putting out these content. For example, you and I are talking right now. It's really not for the both of us, but it's really for the people. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the thing here is really scary. But I really took the leap of faith also in posting stuff. Because, you know, this involves people's money. That's the reason why we have to be very careful in posting stuff. That's the reason why I told my social media team, when you do a research, when you do a posting, make sure this is not involving any investments or any cryptocurrencies. So as long as you're not sure, don't post it. And I really don't want to touch in that. You know, we're just going to provide giveaways and we will always have a disclaimer for that. And yes, it's basically in the SEC uh, notes in their website. So, of course, you have to be uh, to be responsible. It's really scary, you know, because in the U.S., um, some influencers got a lot of um, cases happening right now. Like yeah. Kim K, for example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a big load of money. <laughs> well, uh, that's how the consequences and, you know, uh, the jurisdiction when it comes to the U.S. is totally different here in the Philippines. But we don't need to be complacent or just taking the leap of faith. Just know things first before you actually uh, do some stuff and do your own research. Well, it's gas gas na for the do your own research, but it's a responsibility already to inform everyone that, hey, you might be called out to that. I'm really advising some of the um, Gen Z that's actually providing crypto education. So I'm I'm advising them as, as their ate for them to be very careful. That's so nice. Is it um kind of bit, bit squella? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love their content as well. They're very. <laughs> it's, they they really turn those complex um information and turn into basic stuff. So, yeah, kudos yeah. to them. Shout I can out. I still remember way back when I'm starting. You know, they're very lucky because you know way back there's not much information about it but now it's really uh very easy for them to uh produce contents and as long as you have passion basically uh you can definitely adapt the crypto native uh behavior <laughs> exactly yeah i could imagine um i could imagine like you for example jumping into the space in 2016 there barely are information about you know crypto terms like how do you even learn those jargons even not unless you have like mentor, for example, like, but, but how did you, how did you educate yourself then? Aside from, like, well, the one that really gave me the money, uh, when he wanted to basically host an event here, I'm always asking him, uh, asking him questions. I had the right mentor way back up until now. There's a few of the mentors that I have now because, you know, I'm no expert and I, I, I will humble myself for that because I am continuously learning each day because, you know, this technology is just like a million years already every day. There's a lot of advancements already. I know. Yeah, totally. Just rapid. It will humble you, to be honest, when it comes to knowledge. If you're not actually uh, willing to learn what's new, um, you'll be left behind. That's the reality. Yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. <laughs> So I want to get to your future predictions regarding the trends that we're that we're going to see for this year. What's going to be the next big hype in your opinion? Is it going to be well, NFT, the NFT bubble has totally popped out, but what is your your perspective on that? So NFT bubble actually came last year, right? So 2020, 2021, and now for me is really AI. AI, so, yes. Yes, AI tokens, you know, it's really going to be reasonable because last year, last two years ago, we're always selling use cases. But when it comes to AI tokens, it's definitely, uh, if you're going to check, there's a lot of use cases being made already. And it's really useful when it comes to AI. And then there's a lot of AI tokens already booming. I think it's not yet 100. I just actually checked. So um, you can check it out. So it's a good it's a good one. Which one? Sorry. But uh, FET, so fetch.ai, yeah. So, and there's a lot of AI tokens uh, that's been booming. And then the other one is derivatives. And the other one is mining. Wow. I only know chat GPT. And this is the first <laughs> time I'm hearing FET and, and some of the stuff that you just mentioned. <laughs> I, I love to read. I don't know, but I really love to read. 
Uh, I really don't use Facebook uh, to scroll in my newsfeed. I'm really into learning like some stuff in LinkedIn. What's the current trend? What's the investors looking at right now? So basically, that's the most advice, uh, precious advice that I can give you. So feed yourself in the right connection. Follow the ones that's really producing good contents. I really unfollow people, you know. I wow. really block people. <laughs> it's a bit cold. Toxic, I, will, I will really <laughs> block you. I, I'm not afraid, you know, because yeah. it's, it's all about um, if you're not really adding up to the life that I want to create, get out. <laughs> yes, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Um, I I want to expand more on the AI tokens um, mm-hmm. and and what are these AI tokens? Is it similar to crypto tokens that we are that we have right now? Yes, basically. But when it comes to, uh, for example, when you go to their website, you can definitely go ahead and use it. Uh, for example, ChatGPT. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they they have plans in basically launching a token. But I really find ChatGPT very useful for me. Yes. As me answering all of the emails. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, it's really helping me when it comes to constructing words. But to be honest, it's really useful. So I know that there's a token economics that will really uh, be launching there when it comes to this circulation. Again, it still boils down to the token economics of, yes, you may have a good use case, but if you have a poor token economics it it's still not gonna make it so it you need to find the balance between both worlds so between both aspects so as a project owner you you will understand that's the reason why i'm sharing it uh so if you're looking for a good project of course you need to actually know if it's a good token economics plus good use case and then good team of course so you'll you'll definitely go ahead and support that. So it really depends on who you want to support here in this space. Definitely. And this AI, um, this is so revolutionary, right? Like it could it could literally do anything and everything that you want. But there are quite a few people out there that are being alarmed that AI is going to like obliterate people from their jobs. Like AI is going to dominate us. So what is your idea that AI is going to dominate the humanity and are literally going to obliterate people's jobs. Like, what is your advice to people to stay ahead of the curve, basically? So when it comes to this, of course, I do have employees, right? So that's the reason why they're also scared when it comes to me. What if I actually integrate AI into the chat already? So it's going to be having like a floating scene like other big companies there, right? But for me, it really depends on the project owners if they're if they're gonna be embracing this technology but for me it's just gonna be uh productivity and efficiency but it will really not totally replace uh human beings for me right so it because you know ais are built by humans anyways so that's the reason why uh, it cannot take over. There's a lot of uh, movies about that on Netflix or other streaming platforms there. You can definitely check it out that humans still win. Oh, that's a yeah. message of hope <laughs> right there. That's, that's of hope. But of course, um, you know, the, the big challenge here, actually, we had a, a conversation about this along with the partners that I have. So... We, we spoke about that. So this is the part where humans actually need to prove themselves that they're more better than the AI. Totally, 100%. Lastly, Myrtle, you know, it, it's so inspiring that I'm, you're here right now in our show. You're a woman of impact um, and inspiration to many. What do you think are the advantages and the impact that women, women can bring to this male-dominated field? And, and how can they leverage those strengths? So way back 2017, um, it's just like the population of women attending events is really few. It's really low. So now I'm really happy because there's a lot of women already attending conferences, which I'm really, really happy because, you know, um, because me, I really, I am, because other people are into competitive mindset, right? But me, I really want the pe- people to succeed there's no plastic in there or any uh fakeness with what I said. Because when you're truly successful, 
um, you'll be happy when someone is successful as well. So that's the reason why I'm now happy when it comes to the gap that happened way back 2017. And now 2023 is basically there's a lot of projects that's actually you're a, a woman already. So I had this discrimination when I'm raising funds that this I, I, I will not mention them. <laughs> so they, they told me why woman why you you could just be the cmo so wow. i really cried my mother knows that and my, my team really knows that that it's really total discrimination so i just actually uh ignored that so of course and then my mentor told me just don't mind them yeah i continued because you know i didn't go this far for me to quit so that's the realization always I love everything that you just said, Myrtle. Thank you so much for being here. It is an absolute pleasure speaking with you, and I hope that I could meet you personally here in Manila. Um, of course. So stay tuned with our upcoming event for sure. And I'm really looking forward for you to be in a panel as well. well thank you very much. I would absolutely love that. Thank you. <laughs> well, that, that's it for me and Myrtle. We'll see you in the next one.